how to consolidate multiple files using Power Query, whether those files are in a folder on your network, your desktop, or OneDrive or SharePoint. Let's go. So for this demo, I've got three CSV files in a folder. Uh, the data looks like this, pretty simple. I want to use Power Query to consolidate the data. I'm going to use Power Query in Excel, but this works exactly the same with Power Query in Power BI. So what we do, we'll start off with an empty Excel file, and we'll go to the Data tab, Get Data, From File, From Folder. Okay, so that's how you connect to a folder that's on your C drive or on your network. If you want to connect to a file on SharePoint, which I'll show you later on, you use this connector. The two approaches are subtly different at one spot, otherwise they're pretty much identical. So here we go, from folder. You then get given a browse box to go and search for your folder. You can either browse for it by clicking the browse, or you could go and paste the uh, URL in. But here it is, my demo folder. Click OK. And I'm just going to click OK there, and in we go. Okay, we'll now get a list of all the files that are in that folder. And the magic option is this combine and transform. Okay, this is what you want to be clicking on, combine and transform. So I've clicked that. This will now do some really clever things under the hood in a second. The first thing that pops up, it says, what type of CSV file is this? Now, I have no idea. I always just click OK. I guess if it doesn't work, then you might go back and change which CSV file type it is. It's always worked for me just by clicking OK. Under the hood now, you get this big block of steps gets created in Power Query. Now this can be a bit daunting. It's a bit confusing. It doesn't tell you what it's done. So I'm gonna explain what all these things mean. Ultimately, what it's done is stacked these three files on top of each other, but the data is not what I want. Here's the date. Um, it's in the this pretty awful format. And what I'm going to do is actually go into this sample file. This is the key, okay? It's this sample file that is the first file in the folder. And whatever changes you make to this file, those changes get applied to every file as that those files get sucked in. So for example, let's tidy this up and then I'll explain what these other elements are doing. So I want this date and I need to fill it down against every record. So here's a little trick. Um, I am just going to say if this column one contains the word date, put the date here and then as a second step, I'll actually fill that date down. So I'm going to add a conditional column simply saying if column one equals the word date, then I actually want the value from column two. Otherwise, I want a blank and I'll just leave this blank. OK. So there's my date and all my nulls. Then I'll just right click and fill down. So here's all my dates. Lovely. Now what I'll do is I say, okay, what column do I want to get rid of the blanks? I'll get rid of the nulls here. So remove empty on column three. And I now want these to be my headings, but I don't want to use this option of use first row as headers because it'll push this date into the heading row. And that's not great because that's gonna, that date will change for every file. And I don't want to be able to, I don't have to refer to that. In this scenario, the simplest solution is for me to just name these. Okay, so I go color, I'll say units and date. Okay, there are other techniques I'll show in another video for when you've got so many columns, you don't wanna be doing that. But for that, that's fine. I'll then uh, click on that column, hold shift down, click on this column, right click, remove other columns. And then I want to get rid of this sort of subheading. So I'm going to right click on the word color, 
text filter does not equal and it just filters out the word color okay so that's looking pretty good i'm just going to make this a date and this is going to be a whole number and we are set now the brilliantly clever thing about this is that i go to my demo folder now this is my consolidation you get an error most of the time when you make a little change to that transform sample file and most of the time that error is this change type step because it's looking to change that original column one that doesn't exist anymore and most of the time i found simply deleting this step fixes it up and here is my nice consolidation okay everything i did to that first file is now being applied to every file and it gets cleaned up so it's beautiful it really does rely on your source files being structured the same it's not impossible if they're different but it's a lot harder so let's look back at these queries and work out what's going on so ultimately this sample file Okay, if I go to the source step, this is referring to this thing called parameter one. And if I look across to the left, parameter one is this thing called the sample file. And the sample file, if I click on this, if I go to source, well, it's looking at this folder. So here's all the files. And then it navigates to the record zero. Now, Power Query is a zero based language. So record one is actually record zero, okay? Or record one is item zero. So that's what it's doing. It's just grabbing the first file, 2020.01, okay? So it takes that file, there it is, and then we do whatever we want with it. And I did all my steps. Now all my steps then get converted automatically, which is just brilliant, you used to have to manually do this back in the day into this transform file. And if I expand this out, it basically says, give me some sort of, essentially give me a file name and then I'll run all these steps. There's the fill down step. There's the filtered row step. There's the remove other columns. Let me just do something in here. Let me go back into my transform file. Let me go here, windows key full stop. Let's put a smiley face in here. Just so you can see, every change I make here will show up in this, if I scroll down, there it is, there's the smiley face. So the two are linked. If you're ever tempted to go to the advanced editor on this function, you will get a warning saying, if you carry on with this, you're gonna break the link between these two queries. So I strongly recommend you try and avoid that link. You can't reestablish them afterwards, okay? So generally just do all your tweaks, tidies up in this sample file. So what happens then is that this consolidation step, it goes to the folder and it filters out any sort of hidden files, system files, things like that. It then essentially adds this add invoke custom function. So it pulls in that little function, that transform file. There it is, okay. It then renames a few columns and removes everything else. So we're just left with those two. And this is actually the tidied up table. The function has run against 2020.01, it's run against 2020.02, it's running. So that's what's happened. And then eventually just click on this and it expands these out. That's what this automatic step has done. The one thing you notice is that it loses the column types. So whatever column types you pick here in the transform sample file, there's not a lot of point in doing that if you don't need to, because the consolidation doesn't actually inherit those. So I would have to go, um, I can go control A, transform, detect data types, and it's done a pretty good job. I can then go close and load, and every time I click refresh, it scans through that folder. And if I've dropped a couple more months worth of data in, that data will have been appended. It's a beautiful thing. So now I can go to the Home tab, click Close and Load 2. And I could load it into the data model or I can load it as a table. Uh, let's just do that. 
So whenever I wanted this to refresh, put a new file in that folder, right click, refresh, it would run and that table would update. So what about the situation where your files are in a OneDrive for business folder or a SharePoint folder? Process is virtually the same, but subtly different. Okay. The first key is you need the right path. And for OneDrive, it's the, it's the URL up until your name. Don't pick any more than that. I'll put a link to another video where I talk about these strings and issues with the connecting to files on SharePoint and OneDrive. So I copy that. This time I'm going to demo it in Power BI, but totally works in Excel exactly the same way. I'm going to go to Get Data. Then I'm going to pick Folder, but not Folder as in Desktop Folder. I'm going to pick SharePoint Folder. So not this one. You pick this one, SharePoint Folder. Works with SharePoint or OneDrive. OneDrive for business, that is. So we click on that. It'll prompt us for a URL, which we just copied. So we paste that in. If you paste in the wrong URL here, it's a little bit painful. What will then happen is that it actually lists pretty much every file you've got in OneDrive. So it's not the combine option. That's not good. You've got to go transform data. So if we go into transform, we now have to do a couple of different steps. Firstly, we need to find the right folder. So the folder was called demo OneDrive folder. So I'm going to use that to filter this for text filter contains, otherwise you're scrolling for ages and you might not even find it. Okay, contains a demo OneDrive folder. That'll then filter it down to the right folder, hopefully. Um, there's the three files. Excellent. But I don't tend to leave it there. I would actually right click text filter equals. So then you're actually grabbing the proper path rather than that contains part. Um, the contains part, I can just get rid of that step now. It was like a little helper. I don't need it. It's still going to filter here. Um, another bit of advice would be, and let me just do control shift plus to zoom in here. Another bit of advice would be just a filter where text filter equals CSV, just in case some other files get dropped in there or something odd happens, okay? It's not really 100% required, but you can do that. And then my last little recommendation would be that you call this your sort of OneDrive folder and then reference that. It's useful when you're trying to debug later on and work your way back or even have to change the folder. I would right click on that and reference it. So this is a little bit more convoluted than the simple from folder. Okay, this is going to be my consolidation. Okay, and all I need is these two columns. So the content and the name. And I'm just going to right click and remove other columns. Perfect. And then all I have to do is click this little double headed arrow and that will combine the files. And from that point onwards, it's identical to the previous example. Okay. I won't run through the entire tidy up process again. You can just skip back to the previous example to see how I tidied up. But what you'll see is that all those helper queries, they all get created. Click OK. What type of CSV file is it? I don't know. If you're consolidating Excel files, one of the intermediate screens that pops up is what sheet you want to, want to consolidate. So just be aware that the sheets really need to have the same name if you're consolidating multiple Excel files. It can get messy if you don't have that. And here we have it. Here is our transform. There's the sample file. We'd go in there and tidy it up exactly as we did in the previous example. And finally, the consolidation will be pushed out and loaded into the data model. And I've got this one extra folder here, this OneDrive helper folder. And don't forget to rename your steps something useful and meaningful. Well, I hope you find that useful. Please subscribe. You click on the big 
Access Analytics symbol above. Uh, give this video a like if you found it useful. Please leave me some comments. I really like getting comments from everybody. And thank you again for watching. We'll catch you later.